Hey guys, this video is number three in a series of four, and this is going to be solely devoted to ingredients listings on skincare products. Now, I could probably go on this topic for three hours, but I'm going to try to make it very clear and concise and do the best I can to give you all the information you need to know when looking for new skincare products, okay? Ingredients, I'd probably say it's the number one thing to look out for. A lot of skincare companies will make claims, um, as I talked about in one of my previous videos, and it does not match up with the ingredients listing on the back, okay? So I'm going to tell you a couple of things to be aware of. Um, you do need to keep in mind, though, some skincare companies will put an ingredient in a product just so they can make a claim about it, okay? It has nothing to do with how effective the product is actually going to be, but they'll put it in there in such small amounts that it's not going to do any for you, for anything for you um, just so they can make a claim about it, okay? The first thing you need to know about um, ingredients listings is that they're always listed from the um, most amount to the least amount. So, of course, you're always going to see water, um, thickening agents, things that are the actual base of the product are going to be listed the very first thing, okay? Towards the end, you're going to see fragrances, preservatives, um, add-ins, sometimes they'll put in like shimmering ingredients, and they're only needed in very, very small amounts. So those will be towards the bottom. That will also tell you something about the products that are in the same area. Um, so say you're looking at the ingredients listing and you see listed right after a preservative um, vitamin C. Okay, what does that tell you? That tells you that there's pretty much no vitamin C in the product because it's listed after the preservative, which legitimately there's a drop of preservative in each container, okay? So keep that in mind. It's going to help you kind of decode the ingredients list so you can make more informed decisions. Um, other things, let's say they put in some kind of herbal extract and it's listed right next to a fragrance. Fragrances are another ingredient that are only necessary in very, very, very small amounts. So you know just by looking at that, you know, there's pretty much none of that herbal extract present, okay? So it's not going to do anything for you. Um, that's the other thing, too, about ingredients, is that though these plant extracts may have been very well researched, and generally they study them, um, you know, in a single dilution. So it would be the extract and a base, like water or glycerin or something like that. And then they'll apply it to the, um, to the people that they're studying, you know, topically and document the results. That pretty much doesn't reflect how that ingredient is going to act when it's blended in with a whole bunch of other ingredients. So you need to keep that in mind. I mean, of course there are ingredients we know that are helpful to us. Um, certain vitamins, um, minerals, um, you know, certain, certain plant extracts that are tried and true. Cocoa butter, shea butter, things of that nature. Um, green tea extract. So. You know, those are like the big ones that you'll be able to easily recognize, but a lot of times you might have to put in a little bit of research to figure out if this product is worth the time, money, and effort, okay? Okay, so we know that they, how they work the ingredients listing, from most to least. Um, and that is really, you should pretty much judge a product based on the first handful of ingredients. I'm going to give you a really great example here. This is one of my absolute favorite body moisturizers. You're probably going to think it's pretty girly, but... It's Olay's Quench with Cocoa Butter, okay? This is an excellent example as to how you can read the ingredients and know that this is an outstanding product. Let's look at the first three ingredients. Water, of course, most lotions are going to have water as the first ingredient. Glycerin is the base. It's like a thickening, water binding agent. It allows um, your, your skin to retain moisture. And then the third ingredient is niacinamide, uh, or however you say it. That is vitamin B3. Excellent, excellent benefit for your skin. And the fact that it's the third ingredient listed means that this is chock full of it. Um, going further down, the next couple ingredients, we have trevocarol acetate. That's vitamin E. Um, cocoa sea butter, more thickening agents, arginine, another nutrient. Um, this doesn't raise any red flags. Yes, towards the bottom, you're going to see the typical preservatives, um, methylparaben, polyparaben. <sighs> People are going to freak about the preservatives, but they've been very well studied and they're going to be just fine, especially when they're present in such small amounts. They barely make an effect. They're really only there to keep this product free of bacteria and stable for a longer amount of time. 
So this is just a great example as to how you can read it and know within the first four ingredients, you're like, okay, this is perfect, let's move on with it. As opposed to other products where they disguise the horrible ingredients as good ingredients. Um, here's my example. This is by a brand called Philosophy, a very popular skincare brand, and this cleanser is called Purity. It's a one-step facial cleanser. I had read a lot about it on Sephora. People were raving about it. It was like the top of the charts. So I said, you know what? There was this little package I went ahead and got it. I wanted to give it a try. I made the mistake of using this product without looking at the ingredients. Um, within a couple of weeks of using it, I noticed my face seemed kind of like irritated. It was red, uh, almost like a rashy feeling. And I, it just didn't make sense. So of course, I went to look at the ingredients and see what was in there chock full of plant extracts may not be a bad thing but what plant extracts, plant extracts were actually in here i came to find out they had put in pepper seed extract in this cleanser pepper seed there is no benefit for pepper seed on your face okay as a matter of fact it's horribly irritating which led me directly to believe that the pepper seed extract in this product was causing my skin to kind of freak out um, other extracts in here, we had cinnamon, um, rosewood oil, sandalwood oil, sage. I mean, it just, it just didn't make sense. All of these plant extracts were, you know, shouldn't be on my face. Um, so as you can see, I didn't use very much of it and I probably will never use this ever again. It just, it kind of makes you frustrated because I would have never even purchased this and it was expensive in the first place if I would have looked at the ingredients and known that it was going to cause my face to freak out pretty much. Not to mention cause damage. The biggest thing about using ingredients, um, irritating ingredients on your face is that a lot of time the irritation that occurs doesn't occur on the skin where you can see it. I was lucky with this one where I knew there was something wrong. A lot of times the irritation occurs underneath the skin where it's breaking down collagen, kind of just messing things up for lack of a better phrase. Um, and you don't see the damage until years down the line. So it's very important that you acknowledge the fact that there are irritating ingredients and you should stay away from it, okay? So um, the other thing about ingredients listings that I'm gonna move on to next is the fact that you're gonna to have to get familiar with some of the most popular ingredients and the different names that they can be called in order to actually um, you know, make it worth your effort. Um, if you're reading through this, a lot of times they're gonna put in the scientific nomenclature for a name, call it something very um, chemical sounding, when it could be actually very good for your skin. You're gonna to have to consult the internet. There are plenty of ingredient dictionaries that you can find online. Um, and that will kind of explain to you what the product is, how it's used, and whether it's actually good or bad, and in what amounts it needs to be to actually be effective, okay? Um, really, you need to look past the product claims and look at the ingredients to know what is actually in it. Um, if you have allergies, I'm sure you're already familiar with it, and a lot of people are gonna deal with the food that they eat, so you should also be doing it with the stuff that you put on your skin. Okay, guys, it's a totally worthwhile effort. Just get used to it. Um, you'll, you'll find out very quickly that, you know, they'll call vitamin E trophocarol acetate, okay? I know that one, it's down there. Um, like I said, vitamin B3 is niacinamide. Things of that nature, you'll become familiar with glycerin, um, certain types of thickeners, things of that nature, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I really hope you learned something. Just be more diligent about it, and I guarantee you, you'll notice that you can make better informed decisions next time you're out looking for skincare products. Don't let it overwhelm you, and don't let it consume too much of your time, but really, you can be a detective yourself and make very, very good decisions based on what you know, okay? Thanks for watching. Take care.